Morena, Morena Fano, um, Ko Kamiora Everett Toku Ingoa, a uh, Kotera Toku Ingoa Marenga, and Nari Ko Kamiora Marama Pareote Maribo Toku Ingoa Fano, or Etahi or Oku Ingoa Fano, anyway. Um, kia ora everybody, my name is Kamiora. Uh, I am here posting, um, so I'm a part of this challenge, so it's called the uh, comfort challenges and what happens is um, is that I am here to just speak on the first challenge and the first comfort challenge is eye gazing and um, so I've actually been on a bit of a journey of self-healing and everything so most of these challenges I have been able to experience um, in my life already I've already experienced these so I'm able to speak on them quite quickly and but that doesn't mean that I'm not still going to take on the challenges I'm still going to take it on and um, just see how they are applied into my life now because back then when I was doing these challenges I was a different person so um, being able to reflect on that and then noticing the differences in me now because I'm a completely different person um, is going to be fun so for those people that know me, they know that eye contact is a huge thing for me. Um, eye contact shows me a lot about someone's understandings and also their ability to be present in the moment. So if someone is fully present with you, they will, they will show you through their eyes. So if they're looking at you directly, which is why I'm looking into this camera right now, I'm looking directly at you. I'm looking at you, I'm speaking to you, you are the only one that matters. So that's what I get from eye gazing, is that if someone is ready to hear or really ready to listen to you, they will look directly in your eye. And we have been conditioned to not really look at people in the eye because it gets very intense so my understanding of eye gazing is that in te ao Māori our eyes or well in a lot of cultures is our eyes are the windows to our soul so when you're looking into someone's eyes and you're seeing their soul you are seeing them and a lot of people are filled with just a lot of trauma and a lot of darkness and there's a lot of healing that needs to be done in today's society. And for those of you in this comfort challenges that aren't taha or aren't very spiritual, um, I just want to say that feel free to stop this video at all because um, what I'm about to speak on is my truth, pretty much. So when you do look into the people's eyes and when they stop their eye contact, it's um, conditioning beliefs, it's like their suicidal beliefs, it's their trauma and stuff that is stopping them from looking at you. So for people that are drawn naturally to someone's presence, uh, they're meant to be in your life. It's just whether you're ready for that or not. So when someone is looking at you and they can't, and they look away and they can't look at you anymore, is because you've triggered something within them that they need to know, or triggered something within them that they can heal on. So that's pretty much all it is. So eye gazing for me is a very important tool for me to understand where another person's at within their own journey, as well as for me to see what I can help them with because I am I'm a space holder I'm someone that is there to listen to pretty much hold space for those that need healing so I can tell a lot by people's eyes and I'm sure you'll be able to tell a lot by my eyes so my eyes are pretty much saying that I'm genuine I am of love and I am here to help people so for those of you that are looking into my eyes right now, kia ora. Ko kimi ora hau, he paku kōrero noa tēnei e pāna ki ōku ahuatanga, hoki e pāna ki, ki ōku experiences uh, i kōrero te tāne i roto i te kiriata. Um, uh, apparently, like in certain cultures is actually rude to look into people's eyes because it's a symbol of war and that's very relevant to te ao Māori is that if you were to look in someone's eyes you would just say you want to fight because um only those that 
either uh, of love or want to fight, look into your eyes. So that's why we have the poor, poor heady systems and everything like that is because um, that's how we would scope people out with, to find out whether they're genuine or not. And in Western society, it's a, it's a symbolization of trust. So if you look into someone's eyes and um, they genuinely believe that they can trust you, that's how they can tell is by your eyes looking into your soul and seeing that you are trustworthy and you are truthful. So, from Te Ao Māori to Te Ao Pākehā, ko nga mea erua. He Māori au, he Pākehā hoki ahau. Nā reira, e mōhio ana ahau ki ngā tikanga o Te Ao Māori, e mōhio ana ahau hoki ngā tikanga o Te Ao Pākehā. Uh, so, if we mix those two together, we get me. And not just me, there's multiple people like me. There's multiple people that are of Taha Māori and of Taha Pākehā. It's actually really, really rare to meet a pure-blooded Māori and a pure-blooded Englishman. And last night I actually met my first ever white person. My actual white, no Māori or indigenous at all. Oh, actually, he is indigenous to Native American, but no Māori. And because I'm in the South Island, I'm not used to that. I'm used to being around Māori. And when I got around him, I just started asking him, like, what is your whakapapa? Uh, where do you whakapapa back to? What is your DNA? Because I have this feeling that you're not Māori. And he's not. And that was huge for me. I was like, this is my first white person I've ever met. And then I'm realising that that's pretty much what the South Island is. <laughs> South Island is white people hard and I love Pākehā, I love Māori and that was a huge experience for me to meet my first ever shul, full blood white person. He is indigenous though, he's still indigenous but he's like not indigenous to the Māori and I'm like wow, wow. Anyway, anyway I'm going off track. Koeira uh, tōku kōrero roa. Toku kōrero roa, uh, ko kumiora, kumiora pa, marama pareo te mare noi tōku ingoa, uh, ko kumiora ever at tōku ingoa mare nā. Nā reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, uh, mauri ora ki a koutou katoa.